Here we're going to look at a couple of examples from the exhibition of Lituati paintings and we're going to look at them in a little bit more detail and discover a little bit about how they were made, why they were painted and who painted them. The Literati, sometimes referred to as scholar officials, were the cultural elite, the social and administrative elite. Literati painters always saw themselves as amateurs in terms of painting. One of the things you notice with these Literati paintings is they tend to be very monochrome. So, in a sense, a literati painting is a bit like the modern equivalent of a black and white photograph, where you're trying to cut out the superficial and just focus on the essential. A fisherman boating on a river is a common theme in Ming literati painting, and it often expresses uh, an ideal of reclusion and retreat, usually away from a busy official or political life. Essentially, these paintings were acts of self-cultivation. Materials used for a literati painting like this were essentially quite simple, and they were also the same materials in official life and for calligraphy. Paper, brush, ink, ink cakes and ink sticks to make ink from, and an ink stone on which to grind ink to the consistency desired. The brush strokes that were used in a painting like this are often described as calligraphic, which is they use a combination of dots and lines in order to delineate form and to add texture. Mastery of the brush was essential, but so was a deep understanding of the ink. There was a certain amount of ceremony for rubbing the ink. In one single brush, we are able to create different thickness of slime by adjusting the pressure. The character Eternity Yong includes most of the Chinese strokes. Dot, horizontal stroke, vertical stroke, hook, short left down stroke, left falling stroke, slightly upward tick, right falling stroke. In Chinese painting, the brush stroke can be wet or dry, quick or slow, heavy or light, any combination of all these elements. This painting is entitled Ancient Trees and Grey Mists and it's by Wen Zhengming. This is an excellent example of a literati painting from the mid Ming. It depicts a mountainous landscape, a small village, water, wintry trees. It has a number of the defining features of literati painting as well, and these include inscriptions at the top, which we call colophons. These could be added by later collectors or owners of the painting, or by people who were invited to add their comments to the painting. These could happen years or even centuries after the painting was completed. Not just anyone could write on a painting by Wen Zhengming. You had to be someone, you had to have some sort of cultural standing, you had to be from the same peer group. This is a fine example of what are called the three perfections in literati painting. The three perfections are painting itself, calligraphy and poetry. Literati painters were always conscious of the past and were always conscious of tradition and painters who had gone before. And this very sparse composition references a painter from the Yuan dynasty called Ni San. Seals are a way of authenticating an individual's signature. These are the individual seals of the collectors, the artist, and the various other people who wrote on the painting. These are a very important part of the visual furniture, if you like, of the painting.